Hi, and welcome to the Digital Digging YouTube channel. In this video, we'll finally be taking a look at the rest of the future Japanese tech tree in the game of War Thunder. Apologies to all of you who have been waiting for this, and apologies for any mangled Japanese words. Also, where I was unable to find images of exact models, I've used a representative image, the differences between which will be pretty indistinguishable. We'll get stuck straight in with the twin-engined bombers that are due to arrive at some point in the future. To start with, we have two Mitsubishi Ki 21s, the Ki 21 1 and the Ki 21 2. The Ki 21 1 was powered by a pair of Nakajima HA5 Kai engines, which generated 850 horsepower apiece and a maximum speed of 268 miles per hour or 432 kilometers per hour. Details for the armament of the Kai 21 1 are a little sketchy, or possibly I am, but as far as I can make out, it had four 7.7mm machine guns arranged across the nose, ventral, and beam positions. It carried a bomb load of 1,653 pounds or 750 kilograms. The Kai 21-2 was equipped with a pair of the more powerful Mitsubishi HA-101s which generated 1,490 horsepower each in a maximum speed of 297 miles per hour or 478 kilometers per hour. It also included an extra 7.7 .7 remote controlled machine gun in the tail. The bomb load was also increased to 2,205 pounds or 1,000 kilograms. Then we have a pair of Mitsubishi Kai 48s, the Kai 48-1 and the Kai 48-2. The Kai 48-1 was powered by a pair of Nakajima HA-26 air-cooled radial engines which produced 950 horsepower each and a maximum speed of 300 miles per hour or 480 kilometers per hour. It was armed with three flexibly mounted 7.7 Type 89 machine guns in the nose, dorsal and ventral positions and carried a normal bomb load of 661 pounds or 300 kilograms which could be increased to a maximum of 881 pounds or 400 kilograms. The Kai 48-2 had the more powerful Nakajima HA-115 engines, which generated 1,150 horsepower and a maximum speed of 314 miles per hour or 505 kilometers per hour. The normal bomb load was 881 pounds or 400 kilos or a maximum of 1,763 pounds or 800 kilos. The last of the twin-engined army bombers is the Mitsubishi Kai 67 Hiryu or Flying Dragon. There were a number of versions of this craft, I'm not sure which we'll be getting so I'll use the specification for the Kai 67 1A which was the main production model. It was powered by a pair of Mitsubishi HA-104 18-cylinder engines which generated 1,900 horsepower each and a maximum speed of 334 miles per hour or 537 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a single 20mm HA 5 cannon in an electric dorsal turret, two 7.62mm Type 98 or two 12.7mm Type 1 machine guns in beam positions. It could carry up to 1,763 pounds or 800 kilograms of bombs or a single 2,358 pound or 1,070 kilogram torpedo. Moving on to the single engine bombers, we have the Kawasaki Kai 32, a two man bomber powered by a Kawasaki HA911B V12 engine generating 850 horsepower and a top speed of 263 miles per hour or 423 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a pair of 7.7 millimeter machine guns and had a bomb load of 990 pounds or 450 kilograms. Then there's the Kai 51 a two-man attacker powered by a Mitsubishi HA-262 14-cylinder radial engine generating 950 horsepower and a top speed of 260 miles per hour or 424 kilometers per hour. It was armed with two forward-facing 7.7 mm Type 89 machine guns, which were replaced with 12.7 mm HA-103 machine guns in later years. It also had a single rear-facing 7.7 mm TE-4 machine gun. It carried a bomb load of 441 pounds or 200 kilograms under normal circumstances, but this could be increased to 551 pounds or 250 kilograms for suicide missions. Onto the Navy craft, starting with the carrier fighters. We have three carrier fighters, the A5M2, the A6M5 Hay and the A6M7. The Mitsubishi A5M2 is a predecessor to the A5M4 we already have in the game. This is an open cockpit fighter powered by a Kotobuki 2 engine which generated 610 horsepower and a top speed of around 326 kilometers per hour or 196 miles per hour at sea level. It was armed with a pair of 7.7 Type 89 machine guns. 
the A6M5 Hay is a variant of the two A6M5s we already have in the game. It had thicker armoured glass and more armour around the cockpit and was powered by a Sakai 21 engine which generated 1130 horsepower and a top speed of 351 miles per hour or 564 kilometers per hour. The wings were modified to increase dive speed and the armaments were upgraded to the 13.2 mm Type 3 machine guns with a fire rate of 800 rounds per minute and two 20 mm Type 99 II cannon. It could also carry two 132 pound or 60 kilogram bombs. Details for the A6M7 are a little thin on the ground, but it's much the same as the A6M5. Has the same armaments, three 13.2mm Type 3 machine guns, and a pair of 20mm Type 99 Model 2 Mark IV cannons with 125 rounds apiece, but it has a larger bomb capacity of 1,100 pounds or 498 kilos. Onto the carrier dive bombers, the HE D3A2 Model 22 was a two pilot aircraft powered by a Mitsubishi Kinseo 54 engine which generated 1300 horsepower. I don't have a maximum speed for this variant however so if someone could enlighten me in the comments section that would be marvellous. It was armed with two fixed forward firing 7.7x97 machine guns and a single flexible rear facing 7.7x97 machine gun. It could also carry up to 551 pounds or 250 kilograms of bombs. We then have three Yokosuka D4Y Suse or Comet, the D4Y1, the D4Y3 and the D4Y4. The D4Y1 was powered by an HE Atsuta 21 engine which generated 1,200 horsepower and a maximum speed of 339 miles per hour or 546 kilometers per hour. It was armed with two 7.7 .7 machine guns in the nose and a single 7.7 .7 machine gun on a rear mount. It could carry a single 550 pound or 250 kilogram bomb in an internal bomb bay and two 66 pound or 30 kilo bombs mounted under the wings. The D4Y3 had the same armaments and bomb load but was fitted with a far more reliable Mitsubishi Kinsai 62 14 cylinder radial engine which generated 1560 horsepower and a maximum speed of 356 miles per hour or 580 kilometers per hour. Sadly, the D4Y4 appeared in the final year of the war, having been converted to a single-seat suicide attacker, which was loaded with 1,764 pounds or 800 kilograms of explosives and sometimes fitted with rocket boosters to increase the speed of the aircraft on the final attack run. And onto the carrier-based torpedo bombers. The B6N2 was a three-man bomber powered by a single Mitsubishi Kasai radial engine which generated 1,850 horsepower and a top speed of 299 miles per hour or 481 kilometers per hour. The armaments consisted of two rear-facing 7.7 .7 Type 92 machine guns, one in the rear of the cockpit and the other fired from a ventral tunnel in the fuselage. It could carry 1,760 pounds or 800 kilograms of bombs. Uh, we also have a second flying boat coming down the line in the form of the Kawanishi HAK-2. This rather beautiful beast was powered by four Mitsubishi Kasai radial engines which generated 1,850 horsepower each and a top speed of 290 miles per hour or 465 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a formidable array of five 20 mm Type 99 cannon distributed across the bow, dorsal and tail turrets and two waist blisters and a further five 7.7 .7 mm Type 99 two machine guns poking out of various fuselage hatches. It could also carry two 1,764 pound or 800 kilogram torpedoes or 2,205 pounds or 1,000 kilograms of bombs or depth charges. Onto the long-range bombers, there are four of them planned, the Mitsubishi G3M2, G4M2, G4M3 and the Yokosuka P1Y1. The G3M2 had seven crew and was powered by a pair of Mitsubishi Kinsai radial piston engines generating 1,061 horsepower each and a maximum speed of 233 miles per hour or 375 kilometers per hour. It was protected by a single 20mm Type 99 cannon in the rear dorsal turret and three 7.7 millimeter type 92 machine guns in the cockpit and a further 7.7 millimeter machine gun in a retractable forward dorsal turret it could carry 1800 pounds or 800 kilograms in bombs or a single aerial torpedo 
The rather nice G4M1 already in the game is joined by the G4M2 and the G4M3. The G4M2 came in a multitude of variations and though it's not yet clear which one we'll be receiving, the base unit was heavily modified and improved with a new wing design, upgraded Cassi Model 21 engines which gave it a maximum speed of 272 miles per hour or 437 kilometers per hour and the dorsal turret being electrically powered with the 7.7mm machine gun being replaced with a 20mm cannon. The G4M3 was further modified and improved with better armour and redesigned wings but otherwise similar in specs to the G4M2. Lastly, in the long-range bomber lineup, we have the Yokosuka P1Y1 Ginga or Milky Way. This three-crew aircraft was powered by a pair of Nakajima Homar 18-cylinder radial engines, generating 1,825 horsepower each and a maximum speed of 340 miles per hour or 547 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a flexible nose-mounted 20mm Type 99 cannon and also had a rear-facing 13mm Type 2 machine gun and a bomb load of 2,205 pounds or 1,000 kilograms and could alternatively carry a single 1,800 pound or 800 kilogram torpedo. Right, onto the land-based fighters, we have three Mitsubishi J2Ms, the J2M2, the J2M3 and the J2M5. These were designed as high-altitude bomber interceptors and, as such, exchanged a certain amount of manoeuvrability for speed and a decent rate of climb. The J2M2 was powered by the Mitsubishi Kase 23A, which generated 1,850 horsepower and a maximum speed of 407 miles per hour or 655 kilometers per hour. It was armed with two 20mm Type 99 Model 2 cannon mounted in the wings and a pair of 7.7 .7 Type 97 machine guns in the upper fuselage. The J2M3 saw the fuselage machine guns disappear and the number of 20mm cannons in the wing increased to 4. The J2M5 saw an increase in power with the introduction of the Mitsubishi Kesai 26A engine with a mechanically driven supercharger for better speed at height and the gun configuration changed to a pair of 20mm Type 99 cannon in the wings and another pair in the fuselage. We can also look forward to the Kawanishi N1K1J Shiden or Violet Thunder, which was generally thought to be the finest land-based fighter of the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service. It was powered by the Nakajima Homer NK9H radial engine, which generated 1,990 horsepower and a maximum speed of 408 miles per hour or 658 kilometers per hour. It was armed with four 20mm Type 99 Model 2 cannon in the wings and could also carry up to 1,102 pounds or 500 kilograms of bombs. Then we have the Mitsubishi A7M2J Repu or Strong Gale. This one never actually saw combat due to various disruptions to development including a lack of support from various bodies who knew better, allied bombing raids and an earthquake. When the ace pilot Saburo Sakai tested the aircraft however he said it was the fastest fighter he had ever flown and that he felt it could while ascending turn circles around the Hellcat or Mustang. It was powered by a Mitsubishi HA43 which could generate 2,200 horsepower and a maximum speed of 390 miles per hour or 630 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a pair of 20mm Type 99 cannon and a pair of 13.3mm Type 3 machine guns. We also have the J7W1 Shinden, or Magnificent Lightning, a somewhat bizarre looking creature, the concept of which so impressed the Navy top brass that they ordered it into production before the first prototype managed to leave the runway. Though only two prototypes of this beast were completed, these specifications are very impressive. It was powered by a Mitsubishi HA43 18-cylinder radial engine which generated 2,130 horsepower and a maximum speed of 469 miles per hour or 750 kilometers per hour. It was armed with a mighty array of four 30mm Type 5 cannon and could also carry a comparatively weeny 264-pound or 120kg bomb load. Last but certainly not least of the land-based fighters is the much-anticipated J8N1 Nakajima Kicker or Orange Blossom. As you can see by the form, this is the Japanese equivalent of the German ME262. Only two prototypes have flown, one of which crashed, but like the Shinden, the specifications will give us an idea of what to expect in the game. It was powered by a pair of Ishikawa Jima NE20 turbojets, which gave it a maximum speed of 433 miles per hour or 695 kilometers per hour and was armed with a pair of 30mm Type 5 cannon and could also carry a bomb load of up to 1,764 pounds or 800 kilograms. I think for my money the Shinden will certainly have the edge over this one. 
There's another float plane fighter in the form of the Kawanishi N1K1, which is the seagoing version of the N1K1J. It was powered by the 1,460 horsepower Mitsubishi Kasai 13 or the 1,530 horsepower Mitsubishi Kasai 15 and had a maximum speed of 303 miles per hour or 487 kilometers per hour. It was armed with two wing-mounted 20mm Type 99 Model 1 cannon and a pair of 7.7 .7 Type 97 machine guns. This aircraft was produced to meet the demands for a fighter which could be at home operating out of improvised bases after having covered troops during disembarkation. Although it worked well in this role, only 90 of these aircraft made it into action due to Japan's move from an offensive position to a defensive position for which the N1K1J variant was more suited. And we finish with an addition to the high-speed bomber line in the shape of the Yokosuka R2Y2. There's not a great deal of information about this aircraft as only one prototype was constructed. This completed a short flight before being destroyed in a bombing raid shortly afterwards. It was powered by an HEHI 70 engine, which was in fact a pair of HE Atsuta engines coupled to a single gearbox and generated a whopping 3,400 horsepower and a maximum speed of 480 miles per hour or 770 kilometers per hour. It would have been armed with a forward-facing battery of unspecified cannon and could have carried a single 1,600 pound or 800 kilogram bomb. In the game, as you may have spotted, we get the prototype of the version which was instead powered by a pair of Ishikawa Jima NE330 jet engines. I for one will certainly be looking forward to hearing more about this aircraft as I'm sure a number of you two will be too. Right, that's a lot. Apologies once more for the delay. I hope it was worth the wait. If you think it was, then you'd be doing me an immense favour by hitting the like button, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then maybe you'd consider doing that too. Cheerio chaps, and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.